In today's Cubase Quick Tip video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the program selector in Cubase to change the programs in your external hardware synths and other hardware devices. Okay, so this is something that I actually just learned. The way that I found out is I was messing around in Bitwig and found a MIDI program selector device. And I was messing around and figured out I can control the programs on all my hardware synths. And I was thinking, oh, I wish Cubase could do this. And then I finally Googled and found that, of course, yes, it does have the ability to do this. So. On the left hand screen here in the inspector area on any MIDI track, you will see down below right here, a program selector. So depending on the device that you have, it's either going to take just the program data from this here in Cubase and make selections, or it's also going to use the bank selector and make selections. So it just depends on what type of device you have and what kind of MIDI language it's using. And it may or may not take the bank information from Cubase and use it to switch between banks of programs. In this situation, I'm gonna demonstrate, I have a DX7 keyboard, an MKS50 external synth rack unit, and an S3000 and a Kai sampler here. And I'm going to use all of these MIDI tracks here and individually control uh, the program on each device on their own separate channel using separate MIDI channels as well here. So the first important thing to do is to decide which channel each device is going to run on. And I've chosen MIDI channel seven for my DX7. And you can see that I'm selecting channel seven on this MIDI track here. The second most important thing is that you have to send and receive the MIDI data to and from the device somehow through the computer. I am using what's called a Roland UM-1 USB plug and play. It has a MIDI in and a mini out on one end where you connect to your devices and then a USB that you plug into the computer. And so in order to transmit the MIDI data, I have to select correctly on the channel, the MIDI track, which device, which is the UM1. So it is as simple as that. Now when I switch between the numbers here, it's actually scrolling between the different patches in the DX7. And because there is 32 internal patches and then 32 ROM patches, uh, the DX7 takes this MIDI input. So if I was to go to program 32, you could see that it's still on the internal voice. If I change it to 33, it now jumps over into the cartridge ban bank of patches. If I was to go to 64, you can see that it's at 32 cartridge. And if I go to 65, it just goes back into the internal voice patches. So it has this kind of weird loop thing. And it doesn't take any of this bank information. On the top of the screen here, you can see the MKS50 and just below the S3000 sampler. And each one of these MIDI tracks is set to its own MIDI channel, which matches the corresponding device. So the MKS50, I have at channel 5, and the S3000, I have at channel 1. And then when I hop between the banks here, you can see that I can switch individually from each individual unit just built right into Cubase. So I could even save the project, save the MIDI, and save the program built into the actual track. And then when I open up my project, it'll switch automatically to that program. So it's, it's actually really very handy, I find. Mm -hmm. 
And the cool thing about this, obviously, is number one, if your device is really annoying to change patches, maybe you have to walk up, you have to go do stuff. My MKS-50, the buttons are kind of a pain in the butt to flip through. Sometimes the number eight button sticks and it'll stay stuck and then you have to hit it and then it dislodges and then you click uh, the button again but then sometimes it's stuck on the incorrect I don't know it's <laughs> so yeah I was very motivated to figure out if I can do this in Cubase finally figured out after all these years of using Cubase and staring at this program selector and bank selector right in front of my face this whole time uh, I never realized that that's what this thing was